in this video we are going to see about melanocytes so the melanocytes they are nothing but melanin synthesizing dendritic cells they synthesize and secrete melanin containing organelles called as melanosomes this is the structure of melanocyte these processes are called the dendrites and at the tip of the dendrites you can see melanin and this is the melanosome that is the melanin containing organelles so during development the melanocytes they are derived from neural crest the neural crest apart from migrating to epidermis it also migrates to various other structures during development like epithelia of mucous membranes hair follicles leptomeninges dermis inner ear and few other tissues only exception is the melanocytes of retina which is derived from the primitive cup of forebrain and not from neural crest so an electron microscopy and immunohistochemistry with hmp45 this melanocytes can be recognized in epidermis and this tyrosine kinase receptor and its stem cell factor is responsible for the migration proliferation differentiation and survival of melanocytes so any defect in this tyrosine kinase receptor or kit receptor deficiency can lead to pyvaldism and another one is the microphthalmia transcription factor mitf it also helps in the embryonic development of melanocytes so any mutation in this mitf can lead to wardenburg syndrome type 2a so this wardenburg syndrome it is an autosomal dominant condition along with deafness and you also have patchy abnormal pigmentation So as I mentioned before, this melanocytes of retina, they are derived from the optic cup of primitive forebrain and not from neural crest. So the mature melanocytes, they are nothing but melanin synthesizing dendritic cells located in basal layer, hair bulb and the outer root sheath of follicles. Around 7 to 8 weeks of intrauterine life, the melanocytes, they enter the epidermis and by 10 weeks, they contain melanosomes indicating early melanization. So these melanocytes, if you see in this picture, these melanocytes, they hang down from the basal keratinocyte. This is the basal keratinocyte. So they hang down from the basal keratinocyte and they slightly extend into the dermis. But they never extend beyond the level of lamina densa. They slightly extend into dermis, but they are always above the level of lamina densa. And also if you see the melanocyte processes, they extend in between the keratinocytes but they never form intercellular or any other junctions or additions with the keratinocytes so next is the epidermal melanin unit so epidermal melanin unit is nothing but the melanocyte with the concerned epidermal cells so one melanocyte supplies melanin to 36 keratinocytes so this epidermal melanin unit this term was first denoted by fitzpatrick and Bretnack in the year 1963 next coming to micro anatomy in the normal stains they appear as round to oval dark stained nuclei smaller than the surrounding keratinocytes so the number of melanocytes is to keratinocytes is 1 is to 10 which means for every 10 keratinocytes there will be one melanocyte and these melanocytes with the help of dendritic process they transfer the melanin to the basal keratinocytes where they are stored and then degraded so since the melanin they are stored in the basal keratinocytes at any point the basal cells they always contain more melanin than the melanocytes and also the basal cells that are at the tip of the reed ridges are found to be more melanized so the melanocytes they increase in number size and density in a sun damaged skin in light skin there will be few or no melanin granules Whereas in dark skin, the melanin granules will be found throughout the epidermis. Sometimes in upper epidermis also with, within the macrophages. So this is called, these are called as melanophages. Next about the special stains. Number one is the silver stain as melanin is argyrophilia. So argyrophilia, this is the ability of melanin to be impregnated with silver nitrate solution. Which on reduction with hydroquinone can stain black. So this is called as Fondana Mason method. In heavily melanized tumors, we can use oxidizing agents that is strong oxidizing agents like 
hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate to visualize the melanin because in heavily melanized tumors the pigmentation will be very much high so the pigmentation might obscure the normal visualization of melanin hence in these conditions strong oxidizing agents like hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate can be used to visualize melanin and then dopa reaction it stains the melanocytes from dark brown to black so the immunohistochemical markers or otherwise called the melanocyte differentiation markers used are first one is s100 so along with melanocytes this s100 is also used for other cells like langerhans cells macrophages sweat glands adipocytes and squam cells hence it is obvious that the s100 is a sensitive marker but it lacks specificity this s100 b it stains the normal melanocytes another one is gp100 so it stands for fetal or activated melanocytes and then melan a are marked and then tyrosinase pnl2 antigen and this microphthalmia transcription factor mitf this hmp45 it is a monoclonal antibody to gp100 so it is highly specific for the diagnosis of malignant melanoma and also it is negative in normal adult epidermal melanocytes next one is melan a or mart 1 that is melanoma antigen that is recognized by t cells they are more specific than s100 and more sensitive than hmp45 so other markers include t311 they are monoclonal antibody against tyrosinase and then pnl2 against fixative resistant melanocyte antigen and then d5 monoclonal antibody to mitf so regarding the ultra structure so one of the main characteristics of melanocytes is that they lack tonofilaments and desmosomes and that's why they do not form any junction with the keratinocytes even though their process extends in between the keratinocytes the most characteristic organelles melanosomes we discussed already and regarding melanosomes there are four stages of development so the stage 1 is round in the stage 1 the melanosomes they will be round in shape and the stage 2 to 4 they will be ellipsoid in shape and in stage 1 there will be no melanin whereas from stage 2 to 4 there will be enzyme activity this enzyme activity it denotes tyrosinase activity so in stage 2 the melanin deposition begins in stage 3 there will be only little tyrosinase activity whereas in stage 2 the tyrosinase activity will be normal whereas in stage 3 there will be only little tyrosinase activity and the melanin deposition continues this is stage 3 the melanin deposition continues whereas stage 4 there will be fully melanized and there will be no tyrosinase activity so here the melanin fills the entire organel now the regional and racial variation of melanocytes so the concentration of melanocytes are highest in the face and male genitals where it is about 2000 melanocytes per square millimeter whereas it is lowest in the trunk where it is about 800 melanocytes per square millimeter in african american skin they will be large and highly adenocytes so this melanocortin 1 receptor gene mcir it is responsible for the normal pigment variation in humans and regarding the melanocytes in sun exposed areas this uv rays on single exposure they increase the size and number of melanocytes and there will be no change in melanocyte density but what happens during repeated exposure in repeated exposure there will be increase in concentration of dopa positive melanocytes along with increase in size and functional activity whereas in a single during a single exposure there will be only increase in size and number without any change in concentration of melanocytes in long standing sun exposed skin there will be 15 to 20 melanocytes per hyper field and you can see contiguous growth up to 9 adjacent melanocytes and they will be extending up to hair follicle but never up to the level of sebaceous gland so in case if there is any significant confluence of melanocytes or the follicular penetration or nesting or pagetoid appearance then it is not normal then the specialized structure and function number 1 is melanogenesis so melanogenesis is nothing but it is the synthesis of melanosomes within melanocytes so here the main enzyme is tyrosinase which takes part in an hydroxylation and oxidation reaction and this tyrosinase it contains copper so for the tyrosinase to be active this copper from cupric form it should be converted to cuprous form 
for which dopa acts as a cofactor so this tyrosine conversion to melanin has a variable lag period this lag period is decreased in case of sun exposed skin hence if the lag period is decreased the amount of melanin produced will be more there will be more sooner production of melanin whereas in a non irradiated skin the lag period it remains normal or increased so this tyrosinase it is synthesized in golgi associated endoplasmic reticulum where it is transferred to smooth endoplasmic reticulum and incorporated into protein filaments so the stages of melanosomes we saw already and the melanin that is it is synthesized in melanosomes within the melanocytes so we know that melanosomes are melanin containing organelles and the major hormone is alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone from the pituitary so this translocated melanin it immediately forms a photoprotective cover over the nucleus of the keratinocyte so this is the process this tyrosine it is converted to dopa by tyrosinase which is a hydroxylation reaction and then again from dopa to dopa quinone which is an oxidative reaction and this dopa quinone it gives dopa chrome and also combines with cysteine or glutathione to form cysteinyl or glutathione dopa so finally you have eumelanin and pheomelanin this eumelanin is a brown black pigment mainly found in black or asian people and this pheomelanin is a yellow red pigment found in caucasian people so this melanin transfer the tip of the melanocyte dendrites they contain melanosomes we saw in the pic already so phagocytosis of these dendrites by the keratinocytes and hair cortex cells and there will be transfer of melanosomes to the keratinocytes once incorporated into keratinocyte it forms a proto photoprotective cap over the keratinocyte nuclei actually there are nearly four hypotheses for this transfer of melanin from melanocyte to the keratinocytes which we will be discussing in detail later so this p53 it plays an important role in uv induced skin melanization so on uv exposure it stimulates p53 which in turn stimulates pro opio melanocortin alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone which combines with the melanocortin 1 receptor gene and it causes melanocyte proliferation finally so this is the hypothesis i told about this melanosome transfer number 1 is cytophagocytosis so here there will be protrusion of the melanosome containing organelles inside the keratinocytes and they get engulfed by the keratinocytes this is number 1 Number 2 is membrane fusion here it is believed that both the melanocytes and keratinocytes have some pores or channels connecting between them which helps in the transfer of melanosomes number 3 is shedding phagocytosis here the melanosomes are engulfed by the keratinocytes by the mechanism of phagocytosis and number 4 is exocytosis endocytosis here first by the process of exocytosis the melanosomes they come out of the melanocytes and then by the method of endocytosis they are captured by the keratinocytes so applied aspects number 1 is vitiligo destruction of melanocytes is seen and then albinism and then freckles local increase in production of melanocytes and then nevi and then melanoma that is malignant proliferation of melanocytes so next are few points uh, these po the upcoming points are from rooks so the skin pigmentation and melanocytes so the normal skin color is dependent upon structures called chromophores so these chromophores they are nothing but they are pigments in this skin so these pigments in this skin they mainly depend upon melanin in the epidermis hemoglobin mainly in the dermis and then some endogenous substances like bilirubin amino acid nucleic acids and then carotenoids so the melanocytes they synthesize melanin which are transferred by melanosomes to the keratinocytes so the color differentiation is color differentiation between different individuals it mainly depends upon the concentration of melanosomes so the melanin pigmentation can be of two types one is constitutive and other one is facultative this constitutive is genetically determined and it occurs in the absence of sun exposure whereas this facultative pigmentation is the tan that occurs due to sun exposure so the measurement of skin color can be done by two methods one is spectrophotometer and another one is with the help of reflectance chromometer so this reflectance chromometer is also used in other procedures like to measure the uv induced pigmentation 
and then to measure the depth of the bleaching agents by depigmenting agents that is to determine the depth of bleaching caused by depigmenting agents so this epidermal melanin unit as i mentioned already it is the melanocytes with the concerned epidermal cells first denoted by fritz fitzpatrick and bretnack in 1963 one melanocyte supplies melanosomes to 36 viable keratinocytes and the synthesis of melanosomes within the melanocytes is called the melanogenesis so the melanocytes they decrease by an average of 6 to 8 percent per decade and their density will be twofold more in sun exposed areas so the melanosome transport here is a mechanism of transfer of melanosomes it always occurs from the center of the cell to periphery okay as i mentioned before so this is the melanocyte and this is the dendrite of the melanocyte so this melanosome transfer it always occurs from center of the cell to periphery so for this melanocyte transfer to occur you need an effective dendrite formation by melanocytes and for this effective dendrite formation this actin polymerization has to take place which is in turn controlled by gtp binding proteins rac and rho okay now coming to the transfer so if you see this is the uh, melanocyte and this is the keratinocyte and this is the final process that is the transfer of melanosome to the keratinocytes from the melanocyte so this is an actin filament this will be present at the tip of the dendrite so before this final process this melanosome from here it has to reach the actin filament here only if this happens this melanosome will be transferred to the keratinocyte from here so now we are going to see how this melanosome reaches that actin filament so in between you can see this microtubules so this melanosome transfer through the dendrite is happens with the help of these microtubules which carry them to the actin filaments so this microtubules they are nothing but a motor like structure so this is the microtubule uh, you can imagine it as a motor like structure with a plus end and a minus end so this plus end contains kinesin and this minus end contains dynein so this dynein what it does is it helps in the binding of the microtubules with this atp so once it is bound to the atp it creates forces it creates some propulsive force which propels this dynein and melanosome complex towards the microtubule so this dynein melanosome complex gets propelled towards the microtubule to the other end so that always this dynein melanosome and kinesin they remain connected throughout the process so now once this reaches the cortical region of melanocyte there will be three other proteins which help in the transfer of melanocytes myosin 5a rap 27a and then melanosome okay so now the melanosome and uh, dynesin and dynein and kinesin complex they have reached the other end so this myosin 5a rap 27a and melanophyllin these three are waiting for the final process so this myosin 5a its main function is capture of melanosome so this myosin 5a it helps in the capture of melanosome towards the actin filament of the dendrite this is the actin filament of the dendrite and this rap 27a it remains attached to the melanosome membrane and this melanophyllin it helps in the attachment of this myosin 5a and rap 27a along with this actin filament so finally what happens is these three this myosin 5a melanophyllin and rap 27a these three remain as a complex and they help in the transfer of this melanosome towards this actin filament so once this process is completed then the melanosome will be transferred to the keratinocytes okay so this final process it is found to be stimulated by uv rays and melanocyte stimulating hormone whereas niacinamide is found to suppress them so this myosin 5a and rap 27a and this melanophyllin any mutation in this complex can lead to condition like grizzly syndrome 
so another one is lectin it helps in the melanocyte keratinocyte interactions so regarding the melanocyte culture normally the melanocyte it cannot be cultured but it is found that certain natural mitogens like natural melanocyte mitogen fibroblast growth factor 2 mast cell growth factor or stem cell factor hepatocyte growth factor or scatter factor endothelins melanocyte stimulating hormone and leukemia inhibitory factor these all they help in the culture of the melanocytes that is they help in the growth of the melanocytes and also this endothelins like endothelin 1 they help in the sustainability of melanocytes